Hello everybody and welcome to James River Television. We are so glad you're joining us today and we are in part two of a message titled Praise That Paves the Way. This series is based on my dad's latest book, New Normal, and is available now on Amazon. In fact, today I really want to encourage you right now to order New Normal on Amazon or wherever books are sold. You can pick one up for yourself, a friend, or a family member. You know, God wants you to live in a land that's full of his promise and possibility. And we believe this book will help you on your journey to to a new normal. We also have an amazing study guide available on Amazon so you can go through the book with a small group or your spouse or even friends at a coffee shop so you can get the most out of this amazing resource. Or today, if you visit the web address on your screen with the gift of any amount, we would love to send you a hardback copy of New Normal as our special gift to you. And now as we get ready for today's message, remember that last week we learned that there's more happening spiritually than we realize. Today we're going to continue in Joshua chapter 6 and we learned that our praise brings awareness to the presence and power of God in our situation. It's when God's presence is with us that we're aware of how powerful God truly is. Now here's Pastor John with the message. Who defines normal? Is your normal everything you thought it would be? Or does it fall short? What if there was something better just waiting for you? New victories, new blessings, new strength, a new normal. So let me just quickly give you three principles why praise paves the way. Number one, praise is a spiritual weapon. So this is how this works, why this works. Psalm 149 tells us, may the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hand. The Bible says this, the word of God is sharper, Hebrews chapter four, than any two-edged sword. As you and I are speaking the word of God, there is spiritual battles that are happening. There are things that are going as we're declaring with our whole heart, our whole being, the praise of God. Powerful things are happening. Praise is a weapon. Because as we all understand, life's not just a physical fight. Ephesians chapter 6 tells us our struggle's not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world. There's a demonic world that's very real. There's a battle that is happening. You, they need to be defeated, and you won't defeat them with physical weapons. Take spiritual weapons. If we're going to fight a spiritual battle, we've got to have spiritual weapons. Listen, it's not just your neighbor. It's not just your boss. It's not just, it's not just that you have a virus. It's not just this or that. It's that there's a battle that's happening. And we need spiritual weapons to fight that. I don't want what just I can do. I want what only God can do. And I want it as often as I can in as many ways as I can get it. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3 says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. It's not just who you know. It's not how much money's in your bank account. It's not all of those things. It's not how smart you are. It's not how hard you can work. All those things may have their place under the hand of God and his blessing. But watch this. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Paul pictures part of the spiritual warfare as demolishing demonic strongholds or fortresses in our life. In the Hundred Years' War, England invaded France and they set up in northern France a series of fortresses and strongholds. Those strongholds were, were so well built, so well fortified, that it took the French a hundred years to drive the English out of northern France. It gave them permanency. Imagine a century. Here's what the devil wants to do. He watches, he studies, he observes. And his plan for dominating people and ultimately defeating people is he wants to build strongholds. 
And where do strongholds start? They start in the heart, they start in the mind. They start internally, in the invisible realm. They, he watches you, he baits you, he tempts you. You have to be careful where you let your mind go. You have to be careful what you set your affections on. Because whatever you desire, if you desire it, what happens is that desire, Jesus said in the parable of the seed and the soil, he said that desire can choke. When you have a desire for other things, it can choke out spiritual life. Yeah. Let me tell you how that works. Anything you and I desire, we empower in our life. You're allowing it to have a place in your mind, in your heart, in your life, and it begins to govern, and it begins to rule, and it begins to direct. Here's the way the enemy uses it. He plants a thought by what we see, by what we hear, by what we feel. He bombards our mind with that thought, or he takes a suspicion, he takes a fear, he takes a reasoning, he takes a feeling, he takes a desire. He knows what you like, what you don't like. He knows what attracts you and what doesn't attract you. He knows your insecurities, your weaknesses, and your fears. And slowly over time, he begins to build up a stronghold, brick by brick by brick, until he's governing a part of your life. What was Jericho? It's a stronghold. What was Jericho? It was a fortress. What brought down Jericho? It was the shout of praise to God mixed with the faith of people to obey God that brought about a victory. Praise is a weapon that will destroy the strongholds and fortresses in your life. Some of you, and you say, well, how do I know if it's a stronghold? Is it something you can't beat? Is it something you keep coming back to? Is it something that won't go away? Is it something that you say, oh, I guess this is part of who I am? No, it's the enemy. And praise is a weapon to tear down the stronghold. Number two, praise brings God's presence into our situation. In the presence of God in Scripture, when you see that word, uh, invariably, it's, it's a word that's actually, it's face. Uh, so when we're talking about the presence of God, we're talking about the face of God. You say, what does that mean? Well, you're seeing God. The presence of God is God. The presence of God is God himself and all that he is, all that he does. The presence is his voice. The presence is his power. The presence is his working. The presence is his wisdom. When you and I begin to praise God, what happens is God comes down. His presence comes down into our situation. Psalm 22 and verse 3. Yet you are wholly enthroned on the praises of Israel. In the King James, it puts it this way. Yet you are holy. You inhabit the praises of your people. God inhabits. God, when we start praising God, what happens is God's presence comes down into our place, into wherever we're at. You want the, the presence of the Lord in, in wherever you're at? Begin to praise God. Begin to pray, have praise music playing. Don't just let the other people be praising God for you. Don't let them do it for you. Psalm 50, watch this. He who sacrifices thank offerings honors me. So you come in here and you say, God, I'm just going to offer a, th a thank offering to you. God, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for the way you've helped me this week. Thank you that this morning I woke up and that I'm in your presence right now. I just thank you for that. You're honoring God when you do that. And he prepares the way so that I might show him the salvation of God. You start praising God, you're preparing the way, you're, you're getting things ready, you're setting the table for God to show you his deliverance, for God to show you his power, for God to show you his work, for God to, this is why I would tell you, listen, you never get enough church. You never, you never wanna be in a situation where you say, oh, we went last week, you don't need to go this week. Listen, you wanna go every single week because every single week you want what only happens when the saints of God gather together either in person or online because you wanna sense the power, you wanna sense the presence, you want to prepare the way for the week. <laughs> Literally, as the song services, you know what, if you, and, and I'm not, I brought it up a few times, so, you know, I'm not after anybody. I'm not upset about anything. I thought you did really good. You came great today. But let me just say this. 
Sometimes people have the idea, well, you know what, if we, as long as we get in there by the announcement time or the last song, listen, you can get in here at the start, and the reason why you want to get in here at the start is you want to prepare the way for what God's going to do in this service, in the lives of people, and in your own life. And you know what? The more time you spend preparing the way, guess what? The greater the deliverance you're going to see. That's just true. The more time you give, that you spend in the presence of God, the more of God you're going to see in your life. Well, Psalm 34. Now, this, this, there's a superscription above it in Lottie Bibles of David. So David wrote this. When he pretended to be insane before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he left. So that's a story in 1 Samuel. And David goes. He's running from Saul. He's trying to kill him. And he goes to the Philistines, who are the mortal enemies of Israel. It's the dumbest thing in the whole world that he would do it. I mean, he's, for crying out loud, he's killed Goliath. Where's Goliath from? He's the champion from Gath. What city is he going to? Gath. It's like, hello? <laughs> Why does he do it? Right before this, this, or right as he gets ready to go, it says he thought to himself, someday Saul will surely kill me. You have to be very careful what you tell yourself about your situation. Because if you tell you things, if you tell yourself things that are not consistent with the promises of God over your life or the prophecies God has given you about your life, because God had given them prophecy, someday you're going to be the king of Israel. But when you start putting more confidence in what you think and what you feel than in the word of God, you will make terrible decisions. Here's David, he gets in Gath, and all of a sudden they're like, This is the dude who killed Goliath. And David is like, oh, snap. <laughs> Bad decision. So what does he do? He starts letting spit dribble down his beard and starts scribbling on the gates like a madman. And the king's like, listen, I got enough madmen around here. I don't need one more. Get him out of here. And he gets away. That's the background for this. David says, I learned a few things. What did he learn? Listen to this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He says, you know what happened to me? I stopped praising God. I started listening to myself. I started believing me more than I did looking to God. And I made a big mistake that almost cost me everything. I'm not going there anymore. I'm not doing that again. I will bless the Lord. I'll praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm not just going to bless him. When I'm at the, the, the tabernacle, I'm going to bless him all the time. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. What does that mean? You got a magnifier glass? What do you do? You magnify it, make something big. What's magnifying God? It's making God big. You make God big, your problems get small. You make your problems big, your God gets small, right? He says, I'm not going to make my problems bigger than God. I'm going to make God bigger than every single problem I can face. Oh, magnify the Lord. How do you magnify the Lord? You start looking to him and you start exalting him, right? What happens is the more I praise God, the bigger God gets. The more I shout and declare his glory, the more of his glory I see, I experience, I feel. The more of his glory is released in the circumstances, the situations of my life. When I'm praising God, things are happening in me and around me and ahead of me. He's going before me. He's getting big. He's filling up all of that space with his glory and his power. That's what he's saying. It's an amazing thing. You say, oh, I wonder if it works. Look at it in verse 8. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Some of you are making the mistake. You're thinking again, well, if I see God do this, then I'll praise him. No, no, no. Taste and then see. Let praise Come in your mouth and then see the glory of the Lord. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see how good God is. He's better than you can possibly imagine. He's good and he does good. 
He is a good God. He wants to do good. I don't know what you've heard about God, but if you haven't heard first and foremost, he's a good God, then you've heard all the wrong things about God because the gospel starts there. God so loved the world. He's a good God. He loves you. That's good. Let's shout right now for his goodness. Lord, we thank you. You're good. You are good. You do good. Praise your name. Number three, when we praise God, we are fighting the battle spiritually so we can win the battle physically. We've alluded to this throughout, so this is not brand new to you. A lot of people will say, well, I'll, you know, if God just bring me through, then I'm, I'm going to praise him. Oh, I'm going to do this and that. No, praise him before. Praise him before. In the battle of Jericho, did they shout the shout of praise before the walls fell or after the walls fell? They shouted it before, and because they shouted it before the walls fell, if they don't say anything, nothing is going to happen. We praise God before the victory because that's what brings the victory. Listen, let me just say this. That takes discipline. That takes getting a hold of yourself. It takes what we've called before soul control. Where you say, my soul, why are the downcast within me? Hope in God. Sometimes you gotta talk to yourself. I'll bless the Lord at all times, Psalm 103. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Who's he talking to? He's talking to himself. Because sometimes you don't feel like worshiping God. Sometimes you don't feel like praising. And that's the time you more desperately than ever need to praise. And that's the time when you do it, God sees it. And God says, they are doing it. It's hard for them. They're struggling to do it, but they're doing it. And I'm going to bless them. I'm going to show them a power they've never seen and a breakthrough like they've never experienced. This pattern is throughout the Bible. We've looked at it in the Psalms. You look at it in the book of Joshua, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 22. Remember Jehoshaphat in the land of Judah, they're being invaded by this massive army. They're scared out of their mind. They say, God, we don't know what to do. Our eyes are on you. The word the prophet says, listen, I'm a, I got a plan. God's got a plan for you. Here is the plan. When you go down to fight this battle, what you need to do is get the Levites out front, have them singing, and let's all just have a, a gigantic praise service on our way to battle, and God's going to deliver you. Again, very unorthodox. But it shows the power of praise to bring about deliverance. Look at it. As they began to sing in praise, the Lord set ambushes. If they don't, they're not going to experience God's power. And uh, they turn on one another, the enemy does. And when the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. It's the power of praise to transform your situation, to set you free from the things that hold you bound and chained and in bondage. Say, all oh, this is Old Testament. That is Old Testament. Okay, New Testament. Acts chapter 16. You've got Paul and Silas, and they've been jailed and imprisoned, and it says this. The crowd joined in the attack against them, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. You can believe it was really a, a bad beating. And after they've been severely flogged, so their, the skin's been peeled from their back, they were thrown in prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. And upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened them, fastened their feet in stocks. So the stocks were designed to spread the legs and cause the legs to cramp. So their legs are cramping, their back is bloody and raw. And all of this for preaching the gospel. Hey, I thought God was with me. Hey, I thought God loved me. I, I, thought God, I thought God was good. Where's the goodness? You see, once we begin to look just purely physically at our situation, we can talk ourselves out of doing the one thing that will change everything that will bring about the miracle in our life. Be very, very careful about how much stock you put in what you can see. As John, man, that's about as good a point as I've heard you make all sermon. It's good. Be very careful how much stock 
you put and what you physically can see. Because, because we walk by faith, not by sight. And there's a spirit world that trumps the physical world every single time. There's a spiritual world that overrides it. The, your, your battles are won spiritually, then they're won physically. I mean, this is just true, watch this. And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, and here they are singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. Listen, people are watching you. They're watching how you go through what you go through. They're listening to what you say. They're taking notes. And when you're praising God, they're thinking, well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Look at the mess you're in. But you're praising God and you're trusting God and God is strengthening you and things are happening in the spirit world. And they can't see it because they don't know the Lord. Of course they can't see it. But you know that God is at work because God is good and God is powerful and God honors his word. And when, when whosoever offers praise glorifies me and prepares the way so that I might show them the salvation of God, and God inhabits the praise of his I mean listen get these in your heart get them in your mind write them down memorize them live them practice them watch what God will do Paul and Silas Paul says to Silas you know Silas I don't know if I felt worse but I also know this there is a God who is watching over us and if we praise him we can turn this thing around are you with me and silas says okay uh, you'll have to help me find the pitch i can't sing very well and paul says okay let's hit it in f so there they go they start singing suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken and once all and at once all the prison doors flew open and their British chains came loose. Do you realize that their praise not only blessed them with deliverance but resulted in the deliverance of people around them? Do you realize that when God pours out his blessing on you there is so much it just starts spilling over on other people around you that there's more than enough to go around that God will bless you and he'll bless your family and he'll bless your co-workers. Listen, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing, but God brought you to church today, in person or online, that you could hear this message, that you could apply it. And when you do, God is going to work in your life in a supernaturally miraculous way. And you're going to experience his blessing like you've never experienced it before. That's how praise works. It paves the way for God's goodness. Amen? Amen. You know, the truth is this, the physical mirrors the spiritual and the spiritual mirrors the physical. Many times we only think to praise when we see a victory. But what if we decided that praise isn't just a response to circumstances, but a choice we can make each and every day? We praise God before the victory because praise is what brings the victory. God desires for us to experience victory in our lives. And it's when we praise wholeheartedly that we will see victory after victory. Thank you so much for joining James River Television. We hope God has used this message to build your faith and bless your life. My dad's latest book, New Normal, is available on Amazon today. And today, I really wanna encourage you right now to order New Normal on Amazon or wherever books are sold. You can pick up one for yourself or a friend or a family member because God wants you to live in a land that's full of his promise and possibility. And we believe this book is gonna help you on your journey to a new normal. We also have an amazing study guide available on Amazon so you can go through the book with a small group or your spouse or even friends at a coffee shop so you can get the most out of this amazing resource. Or today, if you visit the web address on your screen with a gift of any amount, we would love to send you a hardback copy of New Normal as our special gift to you. Now, as you go throughout your day, this is our prayer for you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May he smile on you and be gracious to you. May he show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless.
If you enjoy watching James River Television, consider supporting God TV. Thank you for your generosity.